Seeing a bunch of healthy snacks and meals prepped and ready to go is one of the many reasons I love meal prepping. This past week, I spent a couple of early morning hours meal prepping some snacks and meals, all of which required five ingredients or less. So usually a successful meal prepping session starts the night before. I try to make sure all of our dishes are cleaned and washed and drying in the drying rack. No, we do not have a dishwasher, so it's so important that we just clean our dishes right away so that whenever I want to meal prep or cook, I have a bunch of clean dishes ready to go. I also like to think through what foods I wanna make. I try to make them cover quite a variety of meals or snack times just so that we have something available for every point of the day. So this week I decided to make a really simple pasta salad, some homemade yogurt that you guys will love, some really inexpensive milk that I could use for baking and just save some money as non-dairy milk is really expensive here. I wanted to make some snacks like brownie bites, crackers, and then also homemade kombucha and our favorite sourdough waffles that reheat beautifully in the toaster. Of course, whenever I'm meal prepping, I love to enjoy a beverage. My beverage of choice right when I wake up, especially at five in the morning, is some black tea with oat milk. So to start, I'm going to make some vegan sourdough waffles, and these are as good as they sound and are very simple. If you are new to sourdough recipes and want to include some vegan sourdough recipes in your weekly meal plan, you definitely need to try out these waffles. So into a bowl, I am putting two cups of fed sourdough starter. I actually had fed it earlier and just stuck it in the fridge because I wasn't ready to use it. So. I just brought it to room temperature and allowed it to warm up for a little while before I whipped up these waffles. So two cups of sourdough starter, some coconut oil, a little bit of maple syrup, cinnamon if you want, salt if you want, those are kind of optional, and two flax eggs, which is just two tablespoons of ground flax seed mixed with six tablespoons of water. Then I'm just gonna stir this all together and make sure there aren't any thick or weird lumps of sourdough starter. And then the most important ingredient, which do not leave this out, I have done that, and they do not taste good if you forget this ingredient, but you need to add a teaspoon of baking soda right before you want to cook these waffles. So once that baking soda has reacted with the sourdough starter, the batter will become light and fluffy and you are ready to cook your waffles. I preheat my waffle maker to the highest setting. This isn't the greatest waffle maker, but it works. And then while the waffles are cooking, that is really hard to say, while the waffles are cooking, I like to use that time to refeed my sourdough starter just so that it's ready to go for the next batch of waffles or pancakes or bread that I wanna make later in the week. So usually my waffles require about four to six minutes to cook. I like to make sure they cook really well so that they are crispy and don't stick to my waffle maker. If you try to lift up your waffle maker and it's sticking, that means they need to cook longer. If that happens, just reclose your waffle maker and let it cook a little bit longer before they are done and ready to be removed and you can start with the next waffle. Because it takes quite a few minutes for each waffle to make, I like to start on other things while they are cooking. I usually just set a timer so that I don't forget about them and burn them because that is something I would do. Let me know down below if you are a burner like me. But I just set a timer and so that I can move on to other things. But at the end of the process, you should have about four to six Belgian waffle-sized sourdough vegan waffles that the whole family will love. So while the waffles were cooking, I started on some homemade kombucha. If this scares you, don't be scared. It is the easiest and most inexpensive way to make kombucha. All I do is put bags of black tea into some boiling water, let them steep for about five to six minutes, Add some sugar so that you have this really strong sweet tea, basically. And then once your sugar is dissolved, I pour this into a large one gallon or two gallon jar. 
And then I just add purified water almost to the top, basically to dilute it. And then you're gonna wanna let this tea cool until it comes to room temperature and isn't too hot to add your SCOBY. If you're interested in this, I will leave the directions and all the measurements down below because it is so easy. While my kombucha tea was cooling, I decided to start on some two ingredient coconut milk yogurt. So I put about two cups of thick full fat coconut cream or you could use full fat coconut milk into a jar and then I'm adding two probiotic capsules stirring it with a wooden spoon and you're done all you have to do is let this sit on the counter for about a day or two depending on the temperature of your house and you will have the thickest most delicious yogurt another thing I wanted to try that I had seen recently was to make my own coconut milk like I said earlier, non-dairy milk is so expensive here and I use it all the time to bake. So I just thought I could use some really inexpensive, delicious coconut cream, dilute it into a milk and just have that on hand for baking throughout the week. So that's what I did. I basically diluted some coconut cream, added a pinch of salt, shook it up and stuck it in the fridge. Next up, I am making some homemade energy bites. You guys have seen me do this a thousand times before, but it really is the perfect snack. You can add whatever mix-ins you want, but the base is always oats, ground flaxseed, some kind of mix-in or flavor, and this time I added cocoa powder to make these brownie bites. Then you need a nut butter and a liquid sweetener of choice. So this time I used tahini and some honey. If you don't want to use honey, you could use brown rice syrup, agave, maple syrup, whatever you want. And then you'll end up with a thick sticky dough that when you use damp hands, you can just roll it up into balls or you could even press it into a rectangle and cut it into bars once it chills. But these are a snack we always have on hand and they are so convenient. By this point, my sweet tea has come to room temperature and I'm going to add one cup of the kombucha from my last batch, as well as something called the mother or the SCOBY. And that is all you have to do to make kombucha. You're gonna need to let this sit at room temperature for about a week and then you'll be ready to enjoy it. Less than an hour later, I've already checked off five of the items on my list and I'm feeling good. A couple hours later, my starter is beautiful. Yeah, I highly recommend getting a sourdough starter from an experienced sourdough baker because then you'll miss out on the headache of starting your own. We had a little intermission. I got five out of the seven things meal prepped this morning and then had to feed the kids breakfast, went on a run, got some groceries for friends coming over tonight. And now I'm gonna make two more things on my meal prep, which is a really easy pasta salad and some homemade crackers. Just trying to get back into the groove of making a lot of our snacks from home with whole grains so that we're not eating pretzels and animal crackers all the time. So let me show you these last two recipes. Don't be intimidated, you guys can make them. And of course it was time for another beverage and I made an iced matcha latte. Another tip, if you don't like meal prep, try to pair it with a fun drink or just something that you don't normally do for yourself so you can sip on your fun drink while you get some meal prep done or do it at your favorite time of day when the house is like calm and quiet and you could just listen to a podcast or music. Um, that makes me really look forward to meal prepping. The next recipe requires four ingredients, one of which is on my balcony, but you just want about um, eight ounces of pasta. And then this I wish was a bruschetta, specifically Trader Joe's bruschetta, but I don't have access to that. And I could not find bruschetta at the store. so. We are going to make some sun-dried tomatoes and the olive oil that they are soaked in work. And then you're gonna need some white beans and then some fresh basil, which I will pick right before serving this pasta salad. And you could add vegan feta. You could add basically anything you like with this kind of combo, whether that's spinach or kale. Normally this would be a tomato bruschetta, but this is a super simple recipe I will link to down below. So to start this four ingredient pasta salad, I am going to cook my pasta in some salted water. And while that's cooking, I'm going to move on to my homemade crackers. So I'm preheating my oven to about 
what would that be, 450 Fahrenheit and into a large mixing bowl. I am adding some whole wheat flour, some salt, and some sesame seeds. And then I'm gonna put in just a couple tablespoons of olive oil and water until I have a dough. I always start with just about a half a cup of water whenever I'm making these crackers because I can always add more and I prefer not to add too much more flour if possible. So as soon as I have a dough form, I stop adding water and that is basically the base of these crackers. I cut my dough in half and I'm just using a rolling pin and my top tip is to roll it out on a silicone baking mat because it allows you to get your crackers really thin. And once I've got a really thin layer, I'm going to sprinkle on some sea salt and then I roll that sea salt into the dough so that it sticks. And then you'll have to just score your dough in whatever shape you want, and then you will pop those into the oven. And here I'm taking a little break to drain and rinse my pasta. But you're going to put your crackers into the oven and you will want them to bake for about 10 to 15 minutes, watching them very closely towards the end so that they don't burn. It really depends on how thin you roll them and your oven temperature. Sometimes I remove the outer crackers and allow the center ones to cook a little bit longer, but that's all you really have to do to make crackers. Once my pasta is drained and rinsed, you're gonna normally add just a delicious jar of bruschetta, your white beans, and fresh basil. And that's all you have to do to make this pasta salad. It's so delicious. But because I didn't have a good quality jar of bruschetta, I just improvised and used the olive oil and the sun-dried tomatoes from the store-bought jar of sun-dried tomatoes, added in some balsamic vinegar, lots of salt and pepper, and it ended up being delicious. My friends loved it. And of course, I also added some fresh basil from my beautiful basil plant that is thriving, which makes me so excited because normally I can't grow anything. I'm so proud of this basil, you guys. I have a black thumb, but it is thriving. Forgot to set a timer, but I caught them with just a few crispy ones, which I will happily eat. So these will get crunchy as they cool. And once they are completely cool, you can break them apart and they are ready to enjoy with hummus or whatever dip you like with crackers. I used to make these crackers all the time when we lived in China and all my friends and family loved them. So it was fun to make them again. Mm. I haven't made these in so long. They are so good. Definitely put lots of salt on top. And at this point, I was done. All right, another successful meal prep is finished. Obviously, some of these things take a little while, but they're so nice to have on hand if, as long as I keep them going. So I always have stock like kombucha. This makes about three, four liters, and it costs me about two bucks. So that's amazing if you can find a mother from a friend. Kombucha, I got pasta salad that I'm going to chill in the fridge, add more basil, and you can always doctor this up however you want. Coconut yogurt will be ready tomorrow probably, especially because it's warm here in my house. There are barely any waffles left, but um, those can be toasted and enjoyed tomorrow. Have another sheet of crackers in my other kitchen. So got lots of crackers to enjoy and our energy bites. So lots of snacks, some meals, and yeah, this will just be so nice to have prepped and ready to go. Oh yeah, and I forgot, I also have coconut milk. Okay, it's been about a day and a half since I made the yogurt, so we are going to taste test it and see if it's tangy. I think last time I only did it for about 24 hours, so it should be even more tangy and ready to chill and enjoy. So let's check it out. All right, I actually checked it this morning. Can you guys see how thick that is? thick and creamy. You're actually supposed to check it with a wooden or plastic spoon, but let's taste it real quick and make sure that it's tangy and how we like it. Okay. Mm, it's so good. It tastes sweet already, mainly because coconut milk is sweet. It's so good. I could let it go a little longer but I think it's perfect for how my kids would like it. So we're gonna chill it. I might actually make a couple parfaits just with some frozen fruit that we could add granola to and that would be a quick, healthy whole food snack that my kids would enjoy. So let's whip up some parfaits and put the rest in the fridge. 
For some reason, the combination of frozen fruit that you let thaw with yogurt reminds me of McDonald's yogurt parfaits, which who knows if they sell that anymore. I haven't been in ages, but wow, these are stunning. With some of the granola I made yesterday, I made olive oil granola. That will taste amazing on this, so yay, yum. A week after I made the kombucha, it was ready to taste test and see if it was ready. I usually go about seven days and it is perfect. And this batch was yet again delicious. So that is a good batch, my friends. So many bubbles. As you can see, I strain it as I bottle it up just to keep bits of SCOBY out of the jars. So making kombucha really is as easy as that. These four um, jars probably cost me about two, three dollars versus maybe 30 to 40 dollars if I bought them from the store. So highly recommend getting a mother or a SCOBY from a friend and trying this out. It just requires tea bags, sugar, water, and your starter, your SCOBY. So yay, kombucha. If you want to recreate any of these recipes, they will all be linked down below. And if you want to check out my last 5 a.m. meal prep video, be sure to check it out here.